I make this for you. 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 Clearly, you got to see this. I hope I'm not just the only smart, no, smart Negro in the room. Huh? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said he had a third grade education. But Elijah was able to, de- was to decode and everything and break it down. So look at it. If, here we go again. Let me play this again. Look, listen to this nigga. The Bible had never told you that Adam and Eve, those two entities, were the first people on the earth, dumbass. Well, what does this mean, Michael Eddie? And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. What does that say to y'all, family? What do y'all get out of that? What do that mean if she's the mother of all living? I don't believe it. I'm just saying according to their own goddamn scriptures. And they don't even know their scriptures. To Zoria, ISUBK, they all teach the same stupid foolishness. They'll tell you too. There was already people here in the land of Nod. But guess what they don't tell you? How old was the people in the land of Nod? How old was Adam when he got kicked out of the garden? Guess what? Adam was 125 years old when he got his son Seth. Did y'all know that? I'm going to say that again. Adam was 125 years old. That's 125 years ago now. After God created him, so-called created him and molded him. See, and I'm not even a goddamn Bible scholar, but I got sense enough to go into detail and check out shit and understand. You could find it in the Septuagint. How old was Adam when he begot his son? He was 125 years old. So 125 years ago, you don't think it's going to be other people on the earth, fool? Damn, these niggas are stupid. Damn, these niggas are dumb. But they call themselves priests and generals and captains. Go and check it out. Go look up this in the Septuagint. I got it. Thank you, Garfield, for sending me these books. <laughs> Thank you, my beloved. Shout out to Garfield. Shout out to Khalil Omani. These niggas make me sick because they poisoning the minds of our people and they not teaching this shit right. So I got to come and clean up this mess. And clean up this mess. Let's go further for this fool. Was Adam and Eve the first people on the earth? Where in the goddamn Bible does it tell you that as a fact? And the Bible don't never tell you that. And the Bible don't never tell you that. And the Bible don't never tell you that. The Bible ain't never told you Adam and Eve were the first people on the earth, nor did it tell you that they were the only people on the earth. Yes, it did. You're just too dumb to comprehend it. You're too dumb to understand it. You're too dumb to correct it. You don't want to correct it. What you did was jumped on the Disney of all the other people that say, oh, the land of Nod was here already. But you ain't going to do the research, nigga. Let's play it again, and then I'm going to teach you. Come on in here. Come into my classroom. Damn. You know what I meant to do, y'all? I meant to get the organ, to play the organ. I got it. To play it in the background so we can have some real church up in here. (laughs) I got to bring entertainment, y'all. I forgot to load it up. I got it. I got the organ in the background and playing the organ for entertainment purposes. I forgot to play. I forgot to load it up, but it'll be on my next one. So listen to this fool. Was Adam and Eve the first people on earth? Where in the goddamn Bible does it tell you that as a fact? And the Bible don't never tell you that. And the Bible don't never tell you that. And the Bible don't never tell you that. The Bible ain't never told you Adam and Eve were the first people on the earth, nor did it tell you that they were the only people on the earth. Yes, it does. And I want y'all to understand something. 
notice when I come with the scholarship, when I come with the sources, when I come with the receipts, they don't come with that. What do they come with? Buffoonery, clownism. Oh, man, shout out to that queen right there, that sister right there. Uh, Clyde Diva, I like that. Oh, man, I love that sister right there. I see me going in. Preach, preach. I like that sister right there. She be going in. I love her style, man. I love her style. Beautiful queen, too, by the way. So <laughs> I got to say that. But um, I want y'all to understand that nigga said the Bible don't never tell you that. So I'm here to free the minds of our people. That's what I'm here. And being that you don't know that the Bible don't tell you that. Well, let me ask you this question, nigga. In the book of Genesis 1, 26, and God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Stop. Nigga. Michael Eddy. Captain Tazoriak. All the Hebrews that's out there. The preachers and the pastors. But they don't say that though. So I'm going to let the pastors and the preachers um, chill on that. So. Was there men already on earth? The land of God, nigga? Did they exist yet? You dumb idiot. Think about it. Because if it did, how come God never talked about that creation story? So, we're going to ask you the question again. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So, stop. Let me ask you a question, Michael. Eddie, was there people here already before God said, let us make man in our image? Kill these niggas. Kill them. Teach. I want you to understand that. I'm asking you a question, nigga. Answer that. <laughs> you see, this is why I tell you they can't come back. Some Negroes say, yes, show me where they was at. Where there? So you're telling me, God, that's not the first time God said, let us make man. Is this the second time that God said, let us make man in our image? Because this right here, God is saying, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Are you telling me that he did this before? And if he did, show me. And if you can show me, you cut me. Show me. Where God said, let us make man in our image. And he created people in the land of Nod. Show it to me. And God said, let us make man in our image and likeness of in our likeness. And let them have dominate, dominant, dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that that upon the earth, that's upon the earth. So, think about that right there. Just that right there. Male and... So, just that right there shows you, was there ever other human beings before God created Adam? And if there wasn't, then God is telling you right there in the book. You said, show me. It don't show that. Show me. Well, I'm showing you. Where the other people at before he made Adam and Eve? Because remember, what day, I'm going to ask my smart people, what day, remember now, check this out. Let's go back to the stop, to the beginning. Let's go to the beginning of Genesis. God created what first? Where my smart people at? What day did God create human on earth? What day was that? Because remember, by you saying it was already people here in the land of Nod, Because God said he created man in what day? Come on, help me out, y'all. Help me out. The sixth day. The fourth day. Some people say the sixth day. The fourth day. The sixth day. The first day. The sixth day. Okay. So I want you to think about this. If God said, let us create man, and he created man in the sixth day and put him in a deep sleep, I, I agree with you the sixth day, the fifth day, right? That means if it was people here already, guess what, family? That means that the people was here before the animals. I'm going to let that marinate. I'm going to let that marinate. All you got to do to find out the truth is go into the book of Genesis, y'all. Read it for yourself. Stop listening to these dumb niggas. Because when God created man out of the mo- and, and breathed into his nostrils and became a human man, right? That was when? The sixth day? The sixth day. 
So if it was people here already before Adam, then guess what? That means that we was here before the um the goddamn crocodiles and the elephants and all of these other hum- um animals on the planet, which we know that that's not true. Check that blow their asses up right there. That blows them out the water right there. Come on, man. Y'all got to see I'm bringing the receipts. Y'all got to understand what I'm talking about. Let's go. Let's go. Male and female created he them. Them who? Humankind. Was humankind only bound to the garden experience? No. How did, do, I want y'all to hear this. Michael Edwards and God had a relationship. Watch how Michael gives us detail about the garden. See, this is where I talk about niggas make up shit. Listen good, y'all. Male and female created he them. Them who? Humankind. Was humankind only bound to the garden experience? No. How do I know that? Because I have a much deeper level of training than you. Because you think the garden is the world. But the garden is a family. And there is much that's going on inside of that garden experience. That guarded garden experience that you don't have a goddamn clue about. Do y'all hear this silly shit? How does he know that the garden got all of this stuff going on in the garden where Adam and Eve was created? The only way you would know, dumbass, if your ass was up in there, if you were sitting in there when God created the animal, he said the, he said the garden is bigger than what you think it is. Listen to him again. Told you these niggas will make up shit on you in a minute. The only one that would know that is the person that was there. So listen to him again. Listen, y'all. Male and female created he them. Them who? Humankind. Was humankind only bound to the garden experience? No. How do I know that? Because I have a much deeper level of training than you. Because you think the garden is the world. But the garden is a family. And there is much that's going on inside of that garden experience. That guarded garden experience that you don't have a goddamn clue about. But you do. There's so much going on in that garden that we don't have a clue about, y'all. Michael Edwards know because he was there in the garden, right? He seen Adam Booty. <laughs> he seen Adam Booty, right? He knows. He was there. His ass was there. These niggas are so pathetic. Let's move on. Check this out. Not to get on your knees and crying weirds and begging you sorry. Who in the world is God repenting to? (laughs) No one. Not to get on your knees and crying weirds and begging you sorry. Who in the world is God repenting to? (laughs) No one. So what he's saying is God don't repent. Who is God repenting to? Nigga. You've been a Hebrew all these years and you don't know that God do repent? That God does say, oh, my bad, I'm sorry. Can somebody look up the word repent for me, please? Can somebody look up repent? I want all of y'all to look up the word repent. And I know some of you already know what it is. But what does repent mean? To be sorry. You know, you made a mistake. You, I'm sorry. But he said, But who is God repenting to? God is not a man that he need to repent. That nigga don't know who God is repenting to. So let's deal with the word. Let's deal with repent for a minute. I want to play it again before we move on. Let's get it. Not to get on your knees and crying weirds and begging you sorry. Who in the world is God repenting to? <laughs> no one. Regretful. I like that. What else we got, y'all? What does repent mean? Regretful. Sorry. Come on, y'all. Throw it up in there. Yeah. 
Sorry. Right. There you go. Sorry as God. He's sorry. What else? What else, y'all? Sincere regret. There you go. There you go. Feel of expressing sincere regret or remorseful. Thank you, because this is the smartest chat room on goddamn YouTube. I tell you that. I tell everybody that. This is the smartest chat room on YouTube. Facts. Facts. So, he don't know who God repenting to. Let me help him. Let me help him out. <laughs> because there's so many, there's like over 20 scriptures in the Bible with God repenting. The dumb nigga don't know that. So, he don't know who God is repenting to. Let me help him out. 1 Samuel 15, 11. It repented me that I have set up Saul to be the king. Now, check this out, y'all. This shit is crazy. For he is turned back from following me. For he is turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried unto the Lord all night. Samuel is mad as shit. That Samuel is jealous. Samuel is hurt that God appointed Saul to be the king. Check this out, y'all. Listen to this shit here. And so he's crying all night. He's, he's sovereign. Oh, God, why you gave him? Why you let him be the king, God? And God looked at him and pat his little head and said, you know what? I'm sorry, man. I, I'm sorry I did this to you. <laughs> I'm sorry I did this to you, Samuel. And he regretted that he made Saul to be king. So Michael, Eddie, Michael, Eddie, in case you don't know who God is repenting to. Not to get on your knees and crying weirs and begging you sorry. Who in the world is God repenting to? <laughs> no one. He said God is repenting to no one. So we're going to stay on the repentance being that you don't even know what repenting, what, um, that God repented in your Bible. So we're going to go on. These are Hebrews, y'all. Let's check it. All right? I already showed you. 1 Samuel 15, 11. Saul got mad as shit. That nigga was crying all night to God. Sovereign and crying. God, why you make Samuel? Why did you make uh, Saul the king? I should be the king. And this nigga crying all night. Go and check it out for yourself. I'm bringing receipts. Notice when these niggas come, they bring clownism because that's all they got. They clowns. They jokers. Why do you think they got to always try to get personal with Khalil Omani? Let me tell you why. Because they have no scholarship. And when you don't have no scholarship to refute what Khalil is saying or what I'm saying or what Godfield is saying, they got to come with the personal assaults now, with the personal attacks now. That's how they got to come. You see? So let's move on. Here's another one, nigga, in case you don't know who God is feeling sorry for. Jonah 3.10. And God saw their works, and they turned their evil ways. And God what? Repented. And God what? Repented. So the nigga, in case you don't know who God repented to, I'm, gonna, I'm here to teach you, nigga. I'm not, a, I'm not even a damn scholar, but I'm here to teach you. Jonah. 310, man, who do God got to repent to? God is not a human. God is not a man. God don't repent, nigga. And he put emphasis on it, nigga. God don't repent. Well, look at it. Jonah, go look it up. 310, and God saw their works and they turned their, here's evil ways. And God repented of the evil that he has said that he would do unto them and he did it not. So God was getting ready to do some evil shit to a nigga. Check. I want y'all to understand this now. Because that's the most merciful God that y'all about to see in a minute. God was about to do some wickedly evil shit. But we mad at Satan. Because God said, no nigga. The only one that can do the evil is me. I'm the one that create good and evil. Y'all do my evil. Follow me. I'm the, I'm the most wicked and evil God in the world. Right? 
<laughs> Check it. See, I'm just trying to keep this shit simple so y'all can see that this is nothing but a Harry Potter book. When we were swept out of power, the white man gave us his book. And some of you dumb, stupid, foolish Negroes out there saying, well, Nat Turner read the book and Nat Turner was a revolutionary. And look at what Nat Turner did with the book. Fool. It was the only book they allowed us to read. So what Nat Turner did was he said, you know what? I'm going to I use it for our forget. freedom. Smart on, on Nat Turner's part. That's what Nat Turner did. They wasn't allowed to read no other damn books. Y'all act like they had books of their choice and they chose the Bible to read. No. They gave them. <laughs> they gave them the Bible to read. And they was only supposed to read certain patches, passages. The ham story. The slave story. Be a good slave to your master. That was the chapters that they were supposed to read. But Nat Turner got a little smarter and got a little educated. He got educated and said, damn, let me see what else is in this book. And they will sneak out in the back to read other passages, other scriptures. And he saw that shit where he said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, limb for a limb, life for a life. And that stuck with him. And Nat Turner carried that out. That's what happened. That's why Nat Turner read the book, fool. Not because he picked the book to read, but because they gave him the book to read. Damn, man, y'all so damn stupid don't know a goddamn thing. Don't know shit. So, let's continue. In the book of Exodus, being that you don't know why God repented or what God got to repent. See, God repented all through the goddamn book, but I'm not giving you everything. God repented, goddamn, I got like 30 goddamn chapters all in the book of this dumb, stupid, ignoramuses. Michael Eddy don't know that God repented. And it's all through his goddamn Bible. Exodus thirty-three fourteen, And the Lord repented the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Here it is again. God is thinking of some evil and wicked shit to do to people. Huh? Check. I'm not bringing you this shit. I'm not singing this. I'm bringing you receipts. Get mad at me all you want. Because you can only get mad because I'm disputing your shit. And I challenge any of you, all the best of the best, to come here and dispute what I'm saying. You know why it's impossible to dispute, to dispute what I'm saying, y'all? Because, see, I'm smarter than the average bear. <laughs> In order to dispute what I'm saying... Guess what? You got to contradict what I'm saying. And if you contradict what I'm saying, then that means you prove my point trying to disprove what I'm saying. That the Bible is nothing but a contradiction. Check. I know I'm getting a little. This is how I get it in. This is how I feel when I go in on these niggas. That's all it is. To dispute what I'm saying is to what? I'm still winning whether you dispute it or you don't. Because you contradicting what I'm saying. <laughs> and we all know by now that the Bible is full of contradictions. Check, y'all. And somebody on, let me, let me say this. Somebody in the comments said, what does check mean? Why, why do we always say check? Well, I say check to keep my beloved brother, rest in peace to Steve Coakley. Steve Coakley used to always say check. Check only means, you feel me? You understand? You got me? You, un you, you feel what I'm saying, right? You got me? That's all check means. That's all. When we say check, we say, do you feel me? Do you understand? You get it. That's all. Check has many meanings. That's all. Understood. That's all it means. When we say check, oh, yeah, check. I got you, brother. I feel you. I see what you're talking about. That's all it means. And Steve Coakley would always say that, so I brought it back out. To keep them alive. Check. <laughs> I love this shit, man. Because they brought me back out. And I'm here to do work. To free the minds and hearts of my people. So let's continue on with this repentance. Being that the dumb nigga 
don't know that God repented all through the goddamn Bible. Let's go. In the book of Jeremiah 40, 42, 10. If he will stay abide in this land, then will I build you. Check it out. Then will I build you and not pull you down. And I will plant you and not pluck you up. God said, I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I repent my, me. I repent me of the evil that I have done unto you. See? God feels sorry for what he have done already. So now God said, yo, my bad. I'm sorry. I did you wrong. I fucked you up. Let me, let me go ahead and build you and I will not pluck you up again and I will not kill you again and I will not destroy you again. I'm sorry. My bad. But this fool don't know God repented all through the Bible. This nigga said, where is it at? Let me show you. Where he at? Where did God repent? God didn't repent. God don't repent. Okay. Let me see. Where is it at? Was Adam and Eve the first people on the earth? Male and female. Not to get on your knees and crying weirds and begging you sorry. Who in the world is God repenting to? <laughs> no one. He said God don't repent to no one, y'all. That's why I titled it. Are they teaching what the books say? Or are they lying and deceiving the people? You be the judge. You be the judge, family. Are they really teaching? I want to see what they're going to come back. They can't come back with this. They done. They can't come back with it. Let's continue. Because the nigga don't know God repented all through this goddamn book. God is a sorry ass nigga. The God of the Hebrews I'm talking about. (laughs) That's the God I'm talking about, y'all. I'm not blaspheming. You can tell that this is a dumb God because them niggas are dumb. Them niggas don't know no history. Them niggas are, oh, fuck. Oh, man. I don't even know. Lost the words, man. Let's go in. Because he, let's, get, let's continue. Amos 7 and 3. The Lord repented for this. It shall not be said the Lord. See? God repented again in Amos 7 and 3. And here's the most famous one. And I'm going to end with this one. But family, believe me, there are so many in there that thank you. Shout out to Garfield again for giving me that goddamn um, concordance, that Bible. Woo, man, Garfield, you're a lifesaver. It's so much that I could give you. Y'all need to start hitting me with some goddamn cash app donations. I'm taking the time out to bring this information to my people. Show some love, family. Show the love. <laughs> Real talk. All right. Where we at? Let's go. Genesis 6 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him at his heart. God was so goddamn sorry that he regretted. That he made me and you, our babies, our children. Why would I follow a nigga like that? That regret that he made man on earth. I'm going to read it here. Go right here in the book of Genesis. And I got something else for that. Right? Check it out. God was sorry. God regretted. In the book of Genesis 6-6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth. And it grieved him at his heart so God wasn't only sorry he was so hurtful it grieved him that he made us family that he made man on earth he was sorry that he made us but you niggas are following him let's go on we're going to move on from that I think I have proved my point and believe me there are like about 15 more repentance stories up in the bible challenge me and I'll get them Prove me wrong, and I'll bring them out. That's all you got to do. Say, saw you lying. 
You, you liar, Saul. Ain't no more in there. You used up all your ammunition. Prove me wrong. I'll get him. I'll take the time out to get him. Let's move on to something else. How about God showing his mercy, his grace, his love for his people in the book of Psalms 103 and 8. See, I'm going to teach you this shit for real. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow in slow to anger and plenteous in mercy in mercy. See? Look at that what it says, in plenteous in mercy. In mercy. Meaning God don't go to anger so fast. Yes, he do. Because remember, this is a jealous nigga. This God that you worship is a jealous God. And I get other stuff because the nigga Michael Eddy said, God is not a human being. God is not a human being. But nigga, in the books it talks about God's hands. It talks about God's ears. It talks about God's mouth speaking. It talks about God said you will see my back. It talks about God walking. What is that? You don't see no spirit, nigga. See, that's another story for another time. I'll wait till this fool open his damn mouth, and then I'll go into that and expose that. But God is emotional. God is jealous. The Lord is a merciful and gracious and slow to anger. No, you're not, nigga. You're not slow to anger, and I'm going to prove it right now. All right? In the book of Isaiah 9 and 19 to 20, and he shall snatch on the right hand. Oh, man. This is where God said, I'm going to make, I'm going to turn, I'm going to put the power and the spirit of, in you niggas where you start eating yourself. I'm going to make you niggas eat yourself. God started making the people eat themselves, y'all. Turning them into cannibals. They was cannibalism. Getting them into cannibalism and all kind of shit. And he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry. And he shall eat on the left hand and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arms. God said he's going to make y'all eat your own arms, (laughs) y'all. But this is a merciful God. This is a God that loves us. He's slow to anger. Is that evil? Would you say that's some evil shit? Hmm, I don't know. Is that some worse shit that the devil would do? Or is that some shit that the devil would do? Make you eat yourself. How come God doing the same thing that the devil doing, but God is mad at the devil, and God said, no, don't follow him, because you do know that that the devil is also a God. Am I lying? I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. The devil is also a God too. Am I lying? He posed to be the bad God, though. And the good God posed to be the ones that we follow. Remember I told you, every time the good God interacts in human affairs with us and interacts with us on planet, he always behaves wickedly. Why does God got to make us eat our own flesh? How come God can't put the spirit of unity, of love amongst us? Why he can't do that? Why it got to be, I'm going to make you eat all each other. I'm going to make you eat your own arms. See, think about what the fuck y'all are celebrating. Because this is the white man shit that y'all going into. <laughs> huh? Check it. Let's go on. In the book of 2 Kings... 223. God got mad at a group of kids. Go and look it up. I'm showing mommy seats. He got mad at children because there was a bald head man going up the mountain. These are kids, y'all. Mind you, these are little kids. Three year old, five year olds. And so the kids do what kids do. They made fun of the Ball-headed man going up the mountain. Guess what they said? It's right there. All right, um, 24. Let's jump down to 24. And they turned back and looked on them and cursed them. No, I don't want to go there that far. That's where they cursed him at. Let's just go. And he went up down until the blint, um, Beth, Bethel. And as, and as he was going up by the way, 
there came forth little children. Listen to this. There came forth little children out of the city and they mocked him and said unto him, go up thou bald head. That's all they was doing. See, these are kids doing what kids do. They mocked the man because he was bald head. So they said, go up thou bald head, go up. And guess what? He turned back and looked at them and cursed them in the name of God, in the name of your Lord. And the Lord granted his claim. Right? And there came two she bears, two female bears out of the woods. Two female bears came out of the woods and they tear 40 and two children of them apart. God sent two female bears to eat and tear 42 children up all because they was laughing at a man going up the mountain. But this is the most high. This is the one who loves us. This is the one who's gracious, who's slow to act. No, this is an emotional ass motherfucker. This is an emotional ass God. Second Kings, go and look it up for yourself. Second Kings 2, 23 and 24. Let's move on. And I'm calling out all you niggas that disprove me. Prove me wrong, Michael Eddy. Prove me wrong, Black Jesus. Prove me wrong, Tazariat. Cat the Zap. Prove me wrong. You can't. Genesis 38, 8 and 2. Oh, shit. (laughs) But this is a gracious God, y'all. God got mad because God told the brother, to go inside of your brother's wife. Y'all know some of this already, but I'm going to re- redo it for those who don't know. And Judah said, unto not, oh not, go unto, go unto thou brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother know that the seed shall not be his and it shall come to pass come to pass when uh oh check it out he went into his brother wife is in highlight look at the highlight he went into his brother's wife that he's in but guess what he spilled the seed on the ground like some of us do you know we having sex with our girl or we having sex with a girl and we don't want to bust the nut inside of her because we don't want to give her a baby. We feel that we are not going to be responsible. We feel that maybe anything going through his mind. Now, I don't want to bust a nut inside of a God. Why you want me to bust a nut in her God? I'm not doing that God, but I get my joint on. I get my joint off. God, shit, I'm going to go inside of a God. I get my shit off, right? So he goes inside of her. He feels himself getting ready to ejaculate. He pulls out and his semen falls to the floor. Guess what God do, y'all, because of that? Every time God interact with us, it's always wicked and evil. Why is that? God slew him because his sperm didn't go inside of the womb. This shit is crazy. Yo, it's crazy because he didn't bust a nut inside of the woman. How come God didn't just say, put the spirit over the dude to make him bust a nut in there? How come everything got to be so wicked and evil with God? Huh? Least that he shall give seed to his brother and the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Wherefore, He slew him also. (laughs) This nigga God is a ruthless motherfucker, boy. I kid you not. Damn. I kid you not. This nigga's a ruthless motherfucker, boy. This nigga said, yo, you ain't going to bust a nut in here, nigga. I told you, this God is a gangster. That's all he is. He's the gangster. When you read the book, God posed to be the gangster over 
the devil, but he can't kill the devil because God and the devil are one and the same. Remember, you kill the devil, you kill God. There's no more need for God. Check. That shit is so easy. If you kill the devil, God, there's no more need for God because evil is off the planet. Right? Check. Think about it. So common sense. This shit is so fucking easy to to decode and break down. Easy. You lying, Saul. I know I'm lying. Prove me wrong, nigga. <laughs> Bring your receipts. I'm bringing mine. Bring your receipts. I'm showing you. He said I'm lying. Did I lie, y'all? In the book of Genesis 38 and 8, 10. Did God kill the man because he didn't bust a nut? You can even go... You ain't got to start at eight. God damn it, start at one. Go to the first chapter. And what makes this story even more appealing and crazy is that because his sons didn't go inside of his wife, as his brother's wife, guess who did? The father impregnated his son's wife. If you don't believe me, go there, read the story. The book of Genesis 38, 8 and 10. Go further down. See, I read it. So when they come with, oh, sorry, you cut it off. You, Oh, man, they cut it off. You ain't, you ain't giving us the context. Nigga, I did read the context. I felt that they didn't need all of that. But I'm going to give it to them now. And if I'm lying, they could cut me. His father went into his own brother's wife and brought forth a child, y'all. Check. Go and look at it if you think I'm lying. Go and look at it for yourself. But this supposed to be the book of God that supposed to be coming to save us. See, what these niggas do is that they want to give you the scriptures that's fair seeming. They want to give you scriptures that's uh, appealing to us. Oh man, look, God said he's going to save us. But they don't want to give you the scripture where God said he's going to kill us. <laughs> you see, they don't want to give us the contradictions They want to give us everything good in it. Not the bad, not the evil. They don't want to tell us God is an evil motherfucker. Because if they do, they know you ain't going to want to be down with that. And so I'm here. Your most high brought me here to tell the damn truth of the scriptures. Remember, nothing happens without God. So I'm doing this because God what God had to give me that energy God is the one that got me doing this nothing happens without God according to you right check so God know that y'all some lying ass bastards what do you mean sir what do you mean God know that y'all turning his word remember in the book of revelations in Deuteronomy God said change not my word don't alter my goddamn word keep my words pure But for some reason, these niggas could never keep God's word pure. Why? Because Jeremiah tried to tell us in the book of 30, 23, 11. He said, for for prophets, for both prophets and priests are profane. Ye in my house have I found their wickedness. See, so God is telling you these motherfuckers are wicked. Michael Eddy calls himself a priest. These other niggas be calling themselves prophets. But what did God say? God said, y'all motherfuckers are wicked and profaned. And when you hear them speak, don't you see them drinking all on camera? Don't you hear them drinking and having fun and all kind of wicked shit? Huh? So when it says, he say that ye are Jews, but are not, but are of your father the devil, the lust of your father ye will do. Who is he talking to? I know some of you say, oh, he's talking to the Jews, the white Jews. Nah, nigga, don't say that. It just say, he are of your father the devil. The lust of your father ye will do. <laughs> huh? That's what he's talking about. It don't put a color on it. But y'all niggas try to put a spin on it and say, oh, he's talking about the white Jews. No, nigga, he's talking about your nigga ass. He's talking about your wicked ass. That's who he's talking about. And he's talking about some of the wicked ass white cracker Jews too. But he ain't putting no damn color on it. All you niggas are wicked. Because y'all changing the word of God. Read it and give it to the people as is. Because if you can't show it to them in the scripture, then what it is, family? 
I ain't got to say what it is, family. Y'all should know it by now. Huh? Is what? If you can't show it to us in the scripture, is what? That's right. That's right, Monty. That's right. It's called makeup. You should be able to show it to us in the damn scriptures. And if you can't, it's called makeup. That's all it is. And that's why they don't want, they don't like me now. They don't even want to come over here now. But see, you the niggas that brought me out of retirement. You the niggas that started talking about Kimmet is gay and Kimmet is homosexual and all this. Now, see, let me show you how I'm not blaspheming. I'll prove to you. There is no letter J until 1524. So it couldn't have been no damn Jesus. Go and read and search it. Don't believe a damn thing I'm telling you. Right? It couldn't have been a Jesus back then. Because the letter J came into existence when? 1524. Go do the research. Go do the fact checking. Go do the research, y'all. So let's move on. According to God, every time he interacts with humankind, this nigga always got to bring wickedness and evil, just like the devil. So you and the devil are the same, God, according to this damn Bible. Y'all niggas are the same. You just mad, and that's why you jealous. You want people to, to praise you over, over the other God, Satan. Huh? Check. <laughs> I'm bringing receipts. I want to see what y'all going to bring. Clownism? Y'all going to bring clownism? Let's go on. In the book of Deuteronomy 4, 32, 31, my bad. For the Lord, thou God, is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee. Listen, for the Lord God is a merciful God. He's merciful, y'all. This is not the God that will kill 42 people. This is not the God that will kill a man just because he pulled out and didn't bust a nut in the woman. This is not that God. But God condones another man having sex with his son's wife. But God didn't kill that nigga. Think about that shit. Let's go back over this. But God didn't kill him. God killed this brother. Because he said, no, I'm not ready for a baby. I don't want to impregnate her. But God killed him. But God didn't kill his father. The one that God killed, God didn't kill his father. And his father laid down and had sex with with his son's wife and did what? Gave her a baby. But God didn't kill that nigga. Damn. But then you lying to us, God, in the book of Deuteronomy 4, 31. Then you come to us, God, and say, for the Lord, thou God, is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee. Right? Neither destroy thee. Listen to the hypocrisy. He will neither forsake thee, neither destroy he, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto them. Damn. God said he will not even kill you. For the fathers. But then again, he go around and do wicked shit. Let's continue. In the book of Isaiah 13, 16. Their children shall be bashed to pieces before their eyes. Now God talking about he putting a spirit on the people that even kill their children. But over here, this nigga just said, for thy Lord God is a merciful God. See what happens is that you niggas don't read the book for yourself. And so when you do read the Bible, and then when you have a question, you're raising your hand, hey, preacher, I got a question. No, 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 baby. You're not supposed to question I make this for you. God don't like that. See, your parents tell you, don't question God. It's, It's a sin to question God. See, that's the trick. But over here in the book of Isaiah 13, 16, their children also shall be bashed to pieces before thy eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Damn. God is even talking about your wives going to be raped. 
all through the goddamn house. By who? Probably the Israelites. He's going to allow people to rape the, the, ch- the mothers of the children. Check. Look how wicked and evil this nigga is. But y'all think that it's okay. That's how sick you niggas are. In one breath, you say, oh man, God is evil. God is wicked. You don't want to be like the devil. Right or wrong, y'all? Do y'all hear them saying this? You don't want to be wicked. You don't want to be evil. Why would y'all want to be like God? God is the devil. That's all they say. Sarnetta, you the devil, Sarnetta. I'm not killing no children. I'm not killing people. I'm not killing motherfuckers for pulling out and not busting a nut in the girls. I'm not doing none of that. But I tell you who are. Yo, God. The God of the Hebrews are doing all of that. But I'm wicked and I'm evil and I ain't killed nobody. (laughs) I haven't killed nobody. I'm just wicked and evil for what? Telling y'all the truth. For putting you up on game. I'm putting you up on this game, y'all. That's what I'm here to do. I'm putting you up on the game of these Hebrews, of these pastors, of these preachers. I ain't killed not one soul. But I'm wicked and I'm evil and I'm the devil. Oh, my God. And then all right, I see somebody say, God might get you. Listen, family, everybody will die. And when I die, believe me, God ain't had nothing to do with it. That was my time to move on. Everybody shall die. So when, when somebody died, they, oh, God did that. Well, nigga, what about you Hebrews? Y'all Hebrews don't die? You think you're going to live here forever? So did God kill you, nigga? Did God kill your mama? For some of you who mother is, is probably passed on, did God kill your mama? Did God kill your baby? Did God kill your daughter? Shut the fuck up then with that stupid shit. Shut it up. You niggas act like you're going to live forever. The only thing that is promised to you in life is death. That's it. You can give the credit to God all you want. But when it, when you leave, nigga, you're leaving. God ain't had nothing to do with that. You had everything to do with that. Your health, your body, you died of old age. You died of because of all the bullshit that we eat. You died because of the pollution and the water. That ain't had nothing to do with God doing that. Check. How many Israelites died on the planet? Y'all act like Israelites don't die, nigga. Fuck out of here with that stupid shit. Oh, God did that. God killed this nigga. Okay. What about your mama? What about your daddy? Did God kill them too? What about your daughters? What about your sons? Did God kill them too? Hey, what about them little babies that got shot with bullets? God did that evil shit too? Huh? Come on, man. Stop. Stop. Let's go on. (laughs) Let's go on. In the book of Jeremiah 4 and 10, what does it say? And if the prophet be deceived, oh, shit. Damn. Now God is running around deceiving motherfuckers. Every time he interacts with humankind, he lies, he deceives people. He's doing everything that he tells us not to do. He's doing everything that the devil does. I told you, dumb niggas, that God and the devil are the same people, are one and the same. Prove me wrong. God created evil. God does evil. The devil does does evil. What's the difference? Check. Come on, family. Talk black to me. What's the difference? In the book of Jeremiah 4 and 10. And if the prophet be deceived, when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. God is telling you dumb, stupid niggas, boldly, that I, nigga, God done it. So it's all right when God can deceive people. Right? It's all right that God can deceive people, y'all. But he tell you, don't do it. Be righteous. Be respectful. Love your fellow human being. Love your people. But in the book of Jeremiah, God is telling you, nigga, I deceived this nigga. 
God is interacting in all this wicked shit. That's all I'm asking you. You say God is good. Is God good or is he evil, nigga? Which, which one is it? Because if you're following Satan, you ain't going no wrong either. Both of them niggas are doing wicked shit on the planet. You know what I you know what they say? What I respect more about Donald Trump is that Donald Trump at least lets you know what he's about. I respect Satan more than I respect God. You know why? Because Satan lets you know what he's about. <laughs> God damn, that's it. That's crazy right there. Satan at least let you know what he was he's about. I have more respect for Satan than God. Because God sit up on the fucking throne and tell you, I love you. I'm here for you. And at the same time, killing 42 children, killing the man for busting a goddamn nut, for pulling out. Come on, fam. At least Satan tell you what he's about. It's the same shit. When you say, man, I got to have respect for, um, for Trump. Because Trump let you know what he's about. Trump let you know he's a goddamn racist. Trump tell you what it's going to be. You got to respect the real nigga. But Satan is the same. God is the opposite. God tells you. This is what God tells you. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. They that dealt truly are his delight. Now listen to what God telling you in Proverbs 12, 22. See, God is a lying bastard. The Hebrews God I'm talking about. Because we know God don't exist. God only exists in man's mind. God only exists because you give it the power to. Without your power, there's no God. We'll be talking about something else. Check. Come on now. Come on. (laughs) <laughs> man created God in his consciousness. Who told you, call me God, I'm God? Who said all of that? Who was there when God formed itself in the darkness? Who was there? According to the scriptures, according to theology. Who was there? Sorry, read numbers. Sorry, let me bring it back down. Let me see. Sorry, read numbers. 3117, let me write it down. And I want to thank everybody who's been sending me scriptures because don't think for one minute I haven't been checking them out. When I be looking at y'all comments and y'all reading them and y'all hitting me with them comments, believe me, I be reading them joints. I go to the comment section and I read and I be like, oh, somebody told me go check this out. And I go check it out. And then I do further investigation on that. And I see it. Saul is going to be in church one day. I might be trying to feed my people. I won't be in there pro um, pro God. I'll tell you that. If I do go in there, I'll be in there to free my people. (laughs) That's where I'll be going. Who knows? A hundred years from now, when they see these goddamn videos, them churches might be falling down, coming down soon. Coming down soon. So, let's get back to it. At least the devil tells you who he is. The devil tell you, nigga, I'm Satan. I'm the devil. I've been seeking to and fro, here and there, in the earth, seeking whom I may devour. See? The devil keep that shit real. God tells you, nigga, I love you. I love you, nigga. (laughs) I'm the most merciful God, nigga. Come to me. I got your back. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's go on. But real quick, lying lips are an abomination. This is what God is saying. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. They that dealt true, truly are his delight. God said, nigga, if you, if you keep it real and deal truly, I love you. You are my delight. I'm coming for you. But in the same goddamn breath, in the same token, God must have took a drink and came back with this. 
2 Theologians 2 and 11. And for thy cause, God shall send a strong delusion that they shall believe a lie. God damn. Let that shit marinate for a minute. But at one point, God said, for those of y'all who believe, who don't deal with the lies, it's an abomination. For those who deal truthfully and truly, it's his delight. But at the same time, God must have forgot. A nigga got drunk on the throne. And the nigga said, and for those who call, <laughs> this shit is crazy. And for this cause, God shall send them strong. God said, I'm going to send. See, because the nigga so powerful, he's going to send a strong delusion that they shall believe a lie. One minute, nigga, you're telling us that we should be truthful. And if we are truthful and honest, we're going to be in a world of delightful, nigga. You're going to love us. But then you send the spirits of delusions amongst us so that we can believe in a lie. Why are you dealing with lies, God? Because that's the devil coming out of you. See? You see how they say you got two sides? One side. Here's the good side. That's the God side right here. That's God talking. And then, around the corner, that's the devil talking. Two-faced. He's two-faced it. <laughs> this nigga two-faced like a motherfucker, man. I'm just keeping it real. I'm showing you real scriptures. And that's why these niggas are mad at me. That's why these niggas will not come and challenge me. Will not sit on, sit on this chair and face off with me. Because they know I got their game. With polite Jabari, Armin Ross squad, all of our metaphysical, powerful teachers couldn't crack this code. I have to come and crack it. You know why? Because I keep this shit simple. This is a simple book. You don't need to get scholarly with a simple book, with a Harry Potter book. Keep this shit simple. It's a simple ass book. And you're dealing with simple niggas. These niggas are simple. Huh? Check. Come on, man. These niggas are simple. One minute, God talking about, nigga, if you're, if you're coming with a lie truly, you are delightful. I love you. I'm going to hold you. I'm going to give you heaven, nigga. You're delight. But then the nigga sends a fucking delusion of, of lies where our people can believe in lies. Let's go on. Because God is love, right? God is merciful, right? Let's see. In the book of Psalms, 1, 06, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures, endures forever. So God say he's merciful forever, y'all. God is merciful forever. And one minute he's merciful, the next minute he's killing children, the next minute he loves all his creation, the next minute he's killing people pulling out. God, this, this shit is just crazy. God is bipolar. <laughs> this motherfucker bipolar like a motherfucker, y'all. Huh? Jack, this nigga bipolar. Damn. Let's move on. First Chron Chronicles. 1625. For the great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared. Now they telling you, check this contradiction out here. God posed to be feared. See, we posed to fear God, but how can we fear God when God didn't even give you that goddamn attribute? God didn't even give you the spirit to fear him. In one minute, you telling us, to fear God. Let's see. In the book of Psalms 19.9. The fear of the Lord is clean. See. He telling us we need to fear God. And that's what a lot of y'all get caught up on. God, you know why? Because that's what the pastors and the preachers tell y'all to do. The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true. And righteousness altogether. Check. See, the priests will tell you that. 
Michael Eddie will tell you that. You need to fear your God. Y'all niggas don't fear God. Boy, you better fear God because God going to come and do this to you. God is going to do that to you. You got to fear God. See, that's the shit that they tell you. But I'm here to bring a new revelation. <laughs> the teach is something else, family. How come they don't show you this scripture? In 1 John's 4.18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear. See that? It's John is telling you, nigga, don't fear God. Cast out the fear. You don't fear nothing because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Oh, my God. I'm going to say that shit again. See that? In one minute, they telling you. See, this is what the pastors and all of them tell you. To fear God. You need to fear God. Don't love him. Fear him. Is this, not, is this a contradiction, y'all? One minute you telling us to fear him because it's so clean. If you fear him, God is going to love you. God going to come to you. But God damn it. God is saying there is no fear in love, but perfect love. Cast out fear. Cast out fear. Get rid of the fear. Because fear has tormented he that feareth is not made perfect in love. So if you fear God, guess what, family? You're not perfect in love. Damn. Damn. These niggas want you to fear shit. That's a contradiction. One minute, fear God. The next minute, Let's go to another scripture. Watch these, watch these fucking contradictions. Revelations 14, 7. Saying, I, I knocked out the S when I screenshot it, y'all. But it's saying, saying with a loud voice, fear God. Fear God. Saying with a loud voice, fear God. And give glory to him. Fear him and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. For the hour of his judgment has come and worship him that he made heaven and earth and the sea and the foundation of waters. See, again, in the book of Revelations, they telling you to fear God. But guess what? How can you fear something that you don't have according to God? Let's, what are you talking about, Sarnetta? What do you mean we don't have the, the power to fear? No, you don't, nigga. According to God, you can't fear nothing. Show and prove, God. Show and prove, Sarnetta. What, what, what are you talking about, Sarnetta? What are you talking about? All right, let me show you. In the book of 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of, but the power and of love and of the sound mind. See that? Come on, man. Stop it. Stop letting these niggas tell you to fear something contradiction this is a contradiction one minute they telling you in the book of revelation 14 7 saying with a loud voice fear god they said fear god nigga god said for god has not given us the spirit of fear <laughs> how the fuck am i going to fear something if i don't have that in me god ain't give us the spirit of fear but the power of, of love and the sound mind. God gave us a sound mind according to the scripture. I'm not saying I believe in none of this shit. What I'm showing you is this shit is a Harry Potter and this shit is nothing but contradictions all through this goddamn scripture. <laughs> you're, you're a bum ass nigga. <laughs> I know because I'm fucking up your shit, right? I'm blowing your shit up. So, of course, I'm a bum-ass nigga. I'm fucking your scriptures up, ain't I? Showing you. But guess what? Prove me wrong. I challenge you niggas to come forth. Get ready. I'm going to open up the phone lines and come forth with your information. But you can't do it. Because if you do, it's what, family? A contradiction. I'm bringing receipts. I'm showing you what's in here. Check. Check. All right, let's go. Let's continue. What else you got, Saul? Uh oh. Isaiah 45 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. 
I, the Lord, do all these things. Woo! Let that shit marinate. Let it marinate. Come on, man. Damn, what happened, y'all? Damn, let's go. What happened? Did God blink my fucking camera off? <laughs> what the fuck you do, God? Did you blink my camera off, nigga? Let's go. Yeah. Let me put on my um I got another one though. I got a backup. There it is right there. I got a backup. See that? God done blinked off one of my damn cameras. I got a backup though. <laughs> nah, I think I hit the wire. And I got a backup. See that? I got backups, y'all. Let me see. I gotta get this one right though. Let me fix my other one. I think I hit the plug. Right. Damn. All right, let me get the other camera back on now. Woo! Shit. I got backups. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got three cameras on this shit right here. But I'm gonna get my other one back on. I think I hit the plug. That's what happened. And you know, some of these Hebrew spooks say, oh, shit. Yeah, God did that. Well, God put it back, nigga. How about that? <laughs> See? God put it back because God know I'm bringing the truth. See, I got extra cameras, y'all. Yeah. So, but check this out, though. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace. That's you, God. And create evil. Hold up. I want y'all to look at that. And create evil. So God, what the fuck is you mad about Satan? If Satan doing evil shit, why are you upset? Why are you mad that Satan doing evil shit, but you yourself create the evil? You create the homosexuality, according to Michael Eddy. Michael Eddy said, yeah, you created that shit. Check. I'm going to move on. Let's move on. Oh, that's the same thing. Okay. So what I would like to do, family, is uh, which I got. I got Infadiji tomorrow. I have Infadiji. He will be in the building. Not in the building, but live. I already got it on video. I recorded them yesterday. I just ain't had time to put it all together. You feel me? So what I would like to do is open up the lines. You know I like to give my people some time to talk, to see what they got to say. Call it in. Let's talk about it. Let's see what y'all got to say about this shit. I think I proved my point that this is nothing but a Harry, a Harry Potter book and it's a contradiction. This book is nothing but filled with contradictions. And so now we open up the phone lines for the people. Call from. Peace and Black Power family. What's your name and where you calling from? Wayne from Missouri, sir. What's on your mind, man? Talk to me. Talk black to me, man. Okay, so uh, I wanted to, you know the part about uh, the guys uh, pulled out when he was in the woman? Yes. You know the rest of it in uh, Deuteronomy 25, 7 through 9? Uh-huh. Well, also... When he, if he didn't have sex with her, they get to take, uh, they get to take the guy to the town's elder, and then uh, she gets to pick up a shoe and slap the shit out of him, and then <laughs> sit in his face. This sit in his face, son. Well, sister, I am so happy that you're at least doing the research and and don't believe what I say. That's why I show you my receipts where you can go and look it up. Go ahead, sister. Did you get, did you? If she does not have, if the guy does not have sex with her, she gets to 
Well, they take them to the elders in the town, and the elders tell her to pick up a shoe, slap the shit out of him with the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> this shit and is crazy. And then at the last I tell him, this is what you get for pulling it out. Damn. Look at that right there. Well, that is. Deuteronomy 25, verses 7 through 9. All right, let me get it. No let me see. Deuteronomy. Say it again. What? Deuteronomy 25, verse 7 through 9. All right, I ain't going to do it now, but I, I put that on the side so I could check it later when I'm finished. But yeah, sister, I'm glad you're doing the research. I'm glad you're checking it because I don't want nobody to believe what I'm saying. Go and do it for yourself. Did you get to the part yet where it talks about his father impregnated her? Yeah. Damn. Shit is crazy. Yes, I got to that part too. But God don't kill the father for that type of shit. God killed the son for pulling out and putting his sperm on the floor, for wasting his sperm on the floor. That shit is crazy. Did you, did you know that, me and you are not allowed to go in any church for funerals or anything like that? Huh? Say that again? If you born out of wetlock, anybody in the chapel is born out of wetlock. You're not allowed to any church, any funerals, nothing like that. That's Hold on. Give me that scripture, sister. What scripture is that? That's Deuteronomy 23, verse 2. Oh, man. I love you this. You can't sell foot in there. That is against God's will. Deuteronomy 20 what? 3, verse 2. Thank you. Thank you. Got to check that out. Oh, man. Thank you, Queen. Appreciate you. All right. I'll, I'll let everybody else call in with their verses. All right. Thank you, Queen. Priest. All right. Man, I love it, man. Our people waking up, and that's my job. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here for that. Call from Peace and Black Power family. What's your name and where you calling from? Uh, my name is Anna, uh, Bronx, New York. What's going on, Anna? Hey, uh, Sonata. I just wanted you see how Mexican Mexicans always um, pray to the Virgin Mary. Uh huh. Do they still read the Bible because the Bible is made for men? So how are they still reading the Bible? And they, you know, they worshiping the Virgin Mary. I don't get it. That's a good point. It's only because they don't understand. They not reading it for themselves. Somebody else is telling them. Do you notice this? I forgot who told me this, but somebody told me this. And I said, oh, my God, that's some real shit. I got to use that. Notice. I want you to notice something. And everybody out there under the sound of my voice, hear me real, real good right now. Notice. Everybody who have a religion that they subscribe to, whether it's Islam, Christianity, Jehovah Witness, Seven Day a uh, Seven Day Adventist, um, all of these, all of these religions, notice all of their gods change. But guess who don't change? Guess who don't change, sister? I don't know. You tell me. The devil. The devil is always the devil. Think about that right there. That's some fires. That's some powerful shit. Every God of every religion, everybody have a God that's different. But guess what? The devil never changed. The devil is always going to be who the devil is. But according to these scriptures, God is always different. Damn. Oh, my God. We all could agree that the devil is not the same God Catholic Christianity, whatever. But they all can't agree in one thing, and it's the Holy Bible. How can y'all not agree in the book, the Holy Book? And y'all making up different religions. I, I just wanted to know about that. But that's a very good point. I never thought of that. The devil never changes. All right. Thank you, sister. Appreciate that. Thank you. Peace. Yeah, man. Allah, what's the difference between... Um, the Arabs devil and the Christians devil. Nothing. Same motherfuckers. What's the difference between the Christians devil and the seven day Adventist devil? Nothing. Same motherfucking niggas. Same niggas causing havoc. <laughs> Call from. This shit is crazy. Peace and black power family. What's your name and where you calling from? 
Hey, man, this is in D.C. How you doing, man? Peace and black power to you, family. How you doing, man? What's up? I'm doing all right, man. Hey, look, man, if you I don't know if you may write this one down to Ezekiel uh, 4, 11, and 12. It talks about God telling Israel to eat shit out of a man's Oh, I already, brother, I already did that already. I got that already. I already did that. They rolled up the shit with bread and everything. <laughs> did you know that? Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, man, they rolled that shit up with bread and everything. Drinking piss. Yeah, man. the one about drinking piss. Now, what scripture is that? That's out of uh, 2 Kings 18.27. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. You gave me something new. 2 Kings what? 2 Kings uh, 18.27. Oh, shit. Damn. 18.27. Thank you. Got that, man. I was was talking to these fools early today. I was asking them. I said, what came first, the chicken or the egg? I said, how come the flood of Noah is supposed to be um, uh, 800 years? You have the... um, the first king, Nama, coming 800 years before the uh, Ham. I said, so Ham was supposed to be progenitor of Africa and Egypt. So how can it be uh, a king before uh, for Ham? You know what I'm saying? And these guys, they, they, tried, they, they tried their best this afternoon. They couldn't do it at all. Yeah, thank so you, I my brother. Down with that, oh, you already so, know, man. appreciate you, man. All we got to do is yes, think, sir. man. It's something to just think. And you'll see, we got him. Yes. <laughs> you know? That's right, man. All right. Thank you, brother. Right. Peace. Peace, man. Hey, family, I hope y'all get that, what I said earlier. I hope y'all got that. What are you talking about, Sonetta? When I said, when God created the earth, when God created the suns and all this other stuff, according to the Bible, then he said what? Let us create man in our image. What man was he talking about? Was he talking about the land of Nod niggas? Or was he talking about Adam? Because when he created Adam... I don't think there was anybody else here on the planet, or was they? Hmm. These are questions that y'all should be asking them niggas. Ask them the right question. Call from... Peace and Black Power family. What's your name and where you calling from? JB out of Houston, Texas. JB, what it is, man? What's happening? What's good with it, son? What's good, man? All I got to say is this, man. One thing I got to say about... The conscious community over overall, it looked like y'all. First of all, on the scriptures, that's the Old Testament. You got an Old Testament, you got a New Testament. So when you talking about the Old Testament, it's a lot of stories all throughout the Bible. In the Old Testament, they lived a certain way. Most of the conscious community, y'all living like it's seventeen seventeen hundred and twenty two. Talking about eat uh, limbs and berries. And, you know, I'm just saying, this 2019 is going to be 2020. I mean, you know, we need to be conscious enough to be woke where you're not stupid. People so conscious, they were taught it. Let me see how smart you are. Let me ask you a question. So when you say this is the Old Testament, did God repent that he made the old, the, the new, the old Testament, nigga? What I'm saying. Oh, hold on, hold, hold up, hold up, go, go, hold go up. Not hold on, hold on. Nigga, did God repent it that he made the Old Testament? Because you saying, oh man, you know that's the Old Testament. Nigga, do that shit still count? Or did God repent it that he made the Old Testament? When you say repent <laughs> when you say, when you say repent. Remember, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ said, I have not come to change the law. But to what? To fulfill it. Shut the hell up with that bullshit you talking, man. He said, see, I don't even know your own goddamn scriptures. He said, I have not come to change the law, but to fulfill it. So I don't give a damn if it's old. I don't give a damn if it's new. He didn't come to change it. He came to what? Fulfill it. The hell is you talking about? everything in the literal sense. You can't just read the scripture and be like, oh, well, that means he's going to win bake the cake. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't know what you're saying. Tell me what you're saying. What I'm saying, you can't just read a scripture and be like, okay, well, he meant that uh, uh, this, that, and the third with a semen with a man. You know, he was making a point. He was just making a point. And you're going to tell us what point he was making. Hold on, hold on, brother, hold on, hold on. You're going to tell us the point he was making because he told you. Go ahead. Tell us the point. Go ahead. Because he told now, you. If you read, it, it, my, it, it, now, all you got to do is read. You know, it, it's nothing for me to tell you. If you read, 
you can just read. So let me ask you a question. But Here's the mean, question. Stop. Stop. Here's the question. Yeah. Yeah. We got we got a problem with understanding. Now I showed you every goddamn um, scripture. I brought every receipt. Just just prove me wrong. Show everybody your, your scripture, and all you'll be doing is contradicting. So now let me ask you a question. Okay. The Old Testament is not good no more. Should we still live by the old or no? Or we throw that away? No, you should not. So we you throw that away then. Be able to t- you you could throw that away. Wow, man. Did y'all hear this shit? So God just wrote all this away, shit man. down. And now we got God just fucked us up. with. No. Man, I'm going to cut that. I'm going to splice that up so that people can hear it. So we need to throw that away. Yeah. God, God just lied to us about all that bullshit. In the Old Testament. You, throw it away. It, you it just, just said it. Too purpose, late. But no, you don't live by the Old Testament. So we throw it away then. Old law is a new law. So we throw it away then. Old law is a new law. So we throw it away. It's an old law and a new law. So we throw it away, right? We throw the old law away and just live by the new one, right? No, I mean, it's good. To what the fuck is you telling us then, brother? Either we throw it away or we use it. What do we do with I'm it? Sorry, uh, you, you live by the new. So we don't we don't go by the old no more, right? Exactly, that's correct. So when Jesus said he has not come to change the law but to fulfill it, what that mean to you? Uh, that means that you know when he came to fulfill what you know what was predestined for him to. Uh, so you think Jesus would be happy with you, nigga? Talking about throw that old law away that we don't need to live by that no more. Um, I actually think he would be uh, very uh, happy, very pleased with me. This is why I say, brother, you need to come over here to Sonetta Ministries so you can learn the true teachers of man, the Bible. I'm going to look you up, man. I'm going to look the tr- you up, man. I've been watching <laughs> you for a while, but I ain't look. I'm going to look you up, man. All right, my brother. Reality, man. I'm, no flicks, man. Have a good day. Peace, good brother. Night. Peace. Do y'all hear these niggas? See, when you beat them on, on the fucking book and you show them their receipts, they got to say stiff like, oh, throw that away. They didn't know I was going to come back with the, Jesus said, he have not come to change the law, but to fulfill it. What you going to say to Jesus then, nigga? Come on, man. Stop playing with this, man. Stop playing with it. I ain't going to let you niggas get away with it. Nah, I'm here to teach the truth. If I got to teach this Bible, it's going to be the truth because y'all niggas are adding to the word. Y'all taking out from the word. You putting it in like y'all had a personal conversation with God. God damn it, I'm going to read it for what it says. That's how I'm going to read it. And I don't need to read it in no goddamn Hebrew or no goddamn Greek. I you gave it to us in, in English, and nigga, I'm going to read it in English. That's how I'm going to read it. Our people ain't no goddamn Hebrew. We don't read Hebrew. Michael, Michael Eddy, what your dumb ass should have did was took Spanish for a second language instead of trying to take Hebrew for a second language. Gosh and 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 that our youth is not trying to hear that dumb shit y'all talking about. And cock the zock sound like you saying cock my zock or some shit. Like cock, right? Cock, like a pump. Cock. And the zock. And like tell a nigga suck on the cock the zocker. What the fuck is y'all niggas talking about? Speak English, nigga. <laughs> we English speaking people. That's just a form of, of what? Trying to confuse our people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said what? Give it to him like you're giving it to him in a baby bottle. Make it easy for them to understand. And the scriptures even tell you something similar to that. Peace and black power family. What's your name and where you talk, where you call it from? What's going on? This G Consciousness calling from Oh shit. Here go my man G Consciousness. I'm gonna take it easy on my brother, cause I met your brother G Consciousness. What's up, man? Peace and black power too. What's going on? What's going on with peace and black power? What's happening, man? Nah, man, I'm just seeing you in here laughing and giggling, man. Uh, you putting up a little, a little show. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, my brother? Uh, nothing, man. You know, uh, you know, I've been, I've been trying to get in contact with you. You know, trying to see what was going on, and for the longest, 
you know, calling, and I ain't been able to get in, so I finally got in, you know. I've been here, you know, I see you done got a hold of that 101 contradictions in the Bible, huh? Nah, bro. <laughs> no, I ain't getting none of that. Imagine if I do get a hold of that. Right. Well, there's there's also a book out there that says 101 contradictions refuted. This as well as it's been addressed as well. So some of the arguments that, uh, that the brother Sinetta is raising, if you want to refute a lot of that information, go to that 101 contradictions refuted. And you can look at some of the uh, different things that they got. Because I, I noticed that you've been raising a lot of those same type of questions. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I see you. But, yeah, um... You know what, what? What you got? What, what you got? What's going on, man? What you What you got in here? Well, I'm looking for something else. I want to show y'all something else. But keep on talking to me, brother. All right. So, yeah, I heard you when you was talking about the fear of the Lord thing, and that was kind of weird that you were saying that because you can still, you like for instance, you got a child, and the Bible says that if you don't have children, right? Yes. And I know you do, and I know that if you tell your children to do something, you know, you can get the you definitely want them to follow what you do, but at the same time, you still love them. So when you look at the scripture, the scripture is clear that God has not, when you look at the context, he's not giving men a spirit of fear, the fear when it comes to what he's called them to do, you know what I'm saying? But he's giving them a uh, sound mind and a, and, 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 uh, and a spirit of love that we see. And with that being said, we know that clearly when you follow an instructions, there is no need of fear, you know what I'm saying? When you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, but when you're done, when you when you're done what you're not supposed to be doing, then yeah, you, there's gonna be some fear. There's gonna be some guilt there. You know, that's even when we deal with our children. I love my child, but I expect him to fear and reverence my word at the same time. If I tell him to do something, I expect him to do that. You know what I'm saying? If he don't do it, then guess what? That ties into that scripture when it says Isaiah 45 and 7. I create evil. One of the reasons God created the Hebrew word is ra'a or ra. What that means is calamity, misery, misfortune, punishment. So when you tell your kids to do something, if they don't do it, if you don't bring no punishment on them, then guess what? They're going to keep on doing it. So when it says that God created evil, notice it says he created evil. That word right there, you can look it up in the Hebrew, it's ra, calamity, misery, misfortune. So God will bring that on you when you don't listen. So that's what that means right there. But if you notice it says he formed light, what is light? He doesn't have to create light because he is light, and light means darkness. What about when he say he create evil? I just told you that. When yeah, I was doing created, something. Man. I wasn't even paying attention, man. My bad, man. Yeah. The word there is ra. The word evil there is ra. You can look it up. And evil there means calamity, misery, misfortune. It does not mean sin. That what is sin? Sin is to transgress that which God instructs you to do. So when you do that, God will bring evil on you. For instance, if I tell my child don't do something and he does it, and I told him don't do it, then guess what? I'm going to punish him. I'm going to bring mis misery on him. I'm going to bring evil on him. But notice it says God brings forth that evil. He brings it forth because of sin. That's why evil has been brought out from God because of sinners, because people sin against God. All right, brother. I don't think my people are trying to hear none of that. <laughs> we hear you, brother. We hear you, though. But I need you to go and uh, try to dispute what I'm talking about, man. I, I don't want to beat up on you, man. You're my brother, man. I don't want to beat up on you, man. Now, you, you can go ahead, but when it says I create evil, look at the Hebrew word there. That's very important. Look at the context. It's not, say context. It's not saying he created sin, which is transgressing now, transgressing against him. No, that's not what that's talking about. It's God brings misery punishment, calamity on those who trust, who trespass against him, who those who uh, don't, do not uh, walk according to his instructions. That's what that means in the text there. The love thing that you talked about is the same thing. You talked about fear. You talked about love. Uh, you can find that in your children just as well. You know what I'm saying? You tell them to do something, they better fear or reverence what you told them to do and have respect to what you told them to do. But at the same time, does that mean you don't love them? You definitely love them, you know what I'm saying? Because you're telling them other things to do or giving them proper instructions to save their life. So they should have a fear and have a reverence for you. When you say that he has not given you a spirit of fear, he has not given you a spirit of fear when you're going against your enemy. 
we know that to be true. God is not giving you no no spirit of fear when you're going against your enemies. And, and if you do got a spirit of fear in you, it's because you're not walking up right with the instructions of God, what he told you to do. Because he'll tell you how to face your enemies and be of courage and not be fearful of your enemies. That's what that scripture is talking about. So you got to take these scriptures out of context. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my brother. Everybody's saying I'm bringing receipts, man. Bring your receipts, brother. That's all I'm asking you. Bring your receipts. Thank you, brother. I appreciate your call. I appreciate your call. All right. All right. Now, family, this is what I want you to check out. I, I ain't hear my brother in my bed, but that's my brother there. I appreciate him. But I wasn't trying to hear him with all that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. After Michael... Eddie, check out what this nigga do. After he drops the ball, family, after this nigga, Michael Eddie, drops the ball over there with his Bible bullshit, he comes over here in my backyard to try to fuck up some shit. What are you talking about, Sarnetta? Listen carefully. Listen carefully. This is what I'm talking about. Listen to this nigga lie. Listen to how this nigga come over here and try to lie to our people. Listen. Did y'all know Merneptah was white? Merneptah. M-E-R-N-E-P-T-A-H. Merneptah was a white man. And so was Ramses II. He had blonde hair, long, stringy, dog-like, blonde hair, and a hook nose. Did y'all hear that? He said Menepta was a white man. And he also said Ramses II was a white man. I'm going to let y'all hear that again. Because he done fucked up. He don't even know the science. He, you know he don't know no history. He fucked up in his Bible. So he comes over here and try to manipulate the masses of our people. Listen to this dumb idiot again. Did y'all know Merneptah was white? Merneptah. M-E-R-N-E-P-T-A-H. Merneptah was a white man. And so was Ramses II. He had blonde hair, long, stringy, dog-like, blonde hair, and a hook nose. So not only did he say Merneptah was a white man, the dumb nigga also says... Ramses II was a white man. Well, let's first deal with Menepta. Do you know, dumb Eddie, that Menepta, that Menepta is the 13th son of Ramses II, nigga? Did you know that? Huh? Did you know that Menepta, here you go on the screen, was the 13th son of Ramses II? Look at that nose, y'all. Look at them lips, y'all. Look at them ears, y'all. Look at the features. This nigga said Menepta was a white man. Oh, y'all say, oh, son, don't lie on Michael. Michael ain't say that. Okay, let's hear it again. Did y'all know Menepta was white? Menepta. M-E-R-N-E-P-T-A-H. Menepta was a white man. And so was Ramses II. He had blonde hair, long, stringy, dog-like, blonde hair, and a hook nose. This nigga said Menepta was white. When you look into the Temple of Luxor, you can see him as a black man on the wall, right there with Asa and Heru. Heru, this nigga said he would dog like hair. But then what goes crazy is that the nigga said Ramesses II was a white man. Now, I know y'all know Ramesses II. There you go. Ramesses II. Look at that nose. Look at that lips. Look at them lips. But I'm going to show you an even greater picture where y'all will be able to see it even better. Hold on. Hold on, man. Look at this. 
Do that look like a damn white man to you? See, he, he already unfailed in his Bible studies. So he comes over here to our side of the field and try to tell our young babies and our youth and our people that Nepta was a white man and that Ramesses II was a white man. But you know that statue that y'all see with um, Abraham Lincoln sitting in a chair? Where do you think they got it from? Ramesses II, nigga. That's where they got it from. That's Ramesses II right there. Take a look at it. That's Ramesses II. Not all Ramesses was related, but you can look at, let me blow this shit up for you niggas. Look at them, look at them big lips and look at that damn nose. That's Ramesses sitting down. That's where Abraham Lincoln copied the picture from where you see him sitting in a chair. When you first come into that shit, look at it. But this nigga supposed to be a teacher. Listen. Did y'all know Merneptah was white? Merneptah. M-E-R-N-E-P-T-A-H. Merneptah was a white man. And so was Ramses II. He had blonde hair, long, stringy, dog-like, blonde hair, and a hooked nose. Look at Ramses II, y'all. This nigga, do it look like he got a hooked nose, y'all? This nigga is a false prophet, a false teacher. He lies and can't even get his Bible right, but he want to come over here and fuck with something that he definitely ain't got no understanding of. Damn. No, the only nigga that got dog-like features is you, nigga. It's all in your DNA. Because you're lying to our people. You're lying to our people. And here's, and guess what? You know who Ramesses the second son is, right? The one you call it Nepta. If his father black, then nigga, you already know Nepta got to be black. Did you know that that was the 13th son? And he was not only just the 13th son, but he was also his successor, nigga. Nepta was his successor. The hell is wrong with you, Michael Eddy? Stay in your damn lane. You got that shit fucked up over there. Lying to the people, talking about Nepta and Ramesses was white. This nigga's a damn fool. All right, family. <laughs> I just had to deal with that. I almost forgot, but I had to deal with that. Go and do the research, and you'll know what, what God already said. Let me see. Where is that? Where is it at? Let me get it. To prove who these niggas are. You already see it. That proves... Who these niggas are. See it? Jeremiah 2311. For both prophets and priests are profane. That's why you hear all they got is curse words when they talk. Watch how they answer this. Watch how they reply to this. They not going to reply with their facts. They not going to reply with their scholarship. I'm going to tell you what they going to probably do. Sarnetta. How come you over there supporting Khalil money? And Khalil Money, he said he, he supports the, the, uh, the LGBT. Nigga, I don't care if he supports the LGBT. He don't come over here and support that. That's still my brother. Would I need to turn my back on him because he's doing what he do in his life? That's his life. I still respect my brother. You know why? Because he have not shown disrespect towards me, especially the way you niggas have done. So if a man can respect me, I got to give him back that same goddamn love, nigga, and respect. I don't give a damn about what he's doing on his side of town, but he come over here and show love and respect me. I'm secure in my manhood. You niggas are not. <laughs> you niggas ain't secure. You niggas are profane. Jeremiah is telling us. You niggas are wicked. Evil, you lie, just like your God, you liars. 
telling people I'm a faggot, I'm homosexual because I support Khalil. Fuck you, Nick Rose. It's crazy. Peace and Black Power family. What's your name and where you call it from? Todd Netta, this is Willie Daniels calling from Detroit. What's going on? You tell me. Peace and Black Power. What's happening? Hey, man, listen. You know, I just listened to that brother you were just talking to, and he just, man, he 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 just said something that I but I think a lot of these brothers don't even know they they have a they have a situation going on with them called Stockholm Syndrome. This book has forced that into their mind, and they don't know how to get it out. They can't they know how to deal with it. That Stockholm Syndrome is right here in this book. It's teaching them to be fearful of that white man. Thank you. Go ahead. And it's and it's pressing it on them. So the more they think they love that white man. <laughs> More they they not willing to go against that. That's got them fucked. That's got a lot of us fucked up. <laughs> and, That's and right. Don't want to believe that. They don't want to believe that shit. Right. That white man put a cold one on his ass. Yes, sir. And if all the ones that sit back and say, "Oh, it ain't a man or be black," Jesus in the Bible is black. They mention black in the Bible, but when they talk about brown feet and hair and wool and all that bullshit. Why they just didn't say Jesus Christ? Why they do that shit? That's right. They fucked us up with that. And they fucked us up for a long time. Yeah. They don't give a fuck if it's the New Testament, the Old Testament, tomorrow's Testament, yesterday's Testament. All that shit is bullshit. All of it. Get Geno Jennings' ass over here. People keep talking about, oh, man, you need Jesus. All them niggas are the same. If you're believing in this King James book, you ain't nothing different about you. You might come with the same passion, but nigga, I'm going to show you you're wrong. Bring Geno Jennings. Let me tell y'all something real quick. When I called Geno Jennings about six months ago, y'all, his secretary picked up the phone. And if they listening, and I know they watching, she picked up the phone and I said, I would like to speak to Geno Jennings. And she said, oh, Geno know who you are. Geno Jennings know who you are, Sarnetta. And I called back the next day, and I was never able to get back on the line. <laughs> I kid you not. Word to my mama. They never picked up the phone again. Geno Jennings know who you are, Sonetta. And the nigga never picked up again. Geno Jennings, bring your ass over here if you think you got what it takes, nigga. Check. Call that fat motherfucker TDJ. Get him on the phone. They, not, they got too much to lose, brother. They making millions of dollars. Everything that they making, they taking it from the black community. Check. I got you. you. Know, the black community is fucked up. Yeah. But Geno Jennings want no parts of this. Thank you, brother. Let me move on. I got another call. All right. All right. Call from. Family, believe me. Geno Jennings want no parts of this shit. They got too much to lose. Them big time preachers. They ain't trying to get torn the fuck down. Peace and Black Power family. What's your name? Where you calling from? It's J.R. Wilder. I'm calling from Oklahoma. What's happening, J.R. Wilder? Oh, man, I got something for you. I got something else for you right now. I got this uh, I got this Leviticus chapter 12. I got a couple verses. I want to break them down to you because it's about this woman in the Bible and who she is. It Go says, ahead. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman has conceived and born a male child, then she shall be unclean for seven days. She shall then continue in the blood of her purification 33 days. She shall not touch any hollow thing nor enter the sanctuary until purification has been fulfilled. Then it says, but, but if she bears a female child, she shall be unclean for 14 days. And she shall continue in the blood of her purification for 66 days and not enter the sanctuary. Now, this right here blatantly tells you that a woman is a lesser being than a man in the Bible, in their word, in their scripture. But they don't teach this right here. And, and some people like to say, um, all y'all do is come out of the Old Testament. Well, I'm going to give you one out of the New Testament. Uh-oh. Go ahead. The woman, the woman is not supposed to be standing up in that church. She is not supposed to be talking. She's supposed to ask her husband. So why ain't y'all going by that? Are y'all just overlooking that? That's yep. in there, too. Now, when you had the brother, uh, what's his name, Khalil Armani on there the other night, uh-huh. the other day, oh, man, he brought something in to me that had been trying to figure out for a while. Now, 
I had went to this church probably about a month ago, right? Uh-huh. A white church. I just wanted, I, I really was just investigating. My spirit led me in there. And while I was in there, he was telling the people the story of Judah. Not, no, no, not Judah, of Jonah. And how Jonah was um, going to try to um, speak to the um, Ninevites to free them. But he was going on saying that the Ninevites didn't want to listen, that they wanted to keep doing the same things that they didn't, that they been doing. And then check out what he said, Sarnetta. He said they started starting little groups like All Ninevites Lives Matter. When he said that, I couldn't believe it, Sarnetta. He actually said this in the church in Oklahoma. And that right there just, I mean, I got up as soon as he said it. Mm-hmm. But that right there, that right there made me really want to investigate a little bit more. And then I just knew, you know what? He justified in saying what he said because the Ninevites were a nation that came from the Seed of Ham. And if the Seed of Ham supposedly populated the continent of Africa, then Ninevites, Canaanites, and all those other ites, which they like to call, <laughs> well, the key, well, well, right. well, the cold word for black in the Bible is Gentile or heathen. Now, now, when the brother Khalil started breaking down about in, in the book of Ezekiel, when we were talking about the Egyptians with the um, the big members, right, right, on their bodies. Uh huh. Now, I had already came across <laughs> that, that 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 the, the curse of Ham about the um, elongated uh, the, right. the elongated um, penis. Uh, body That's part. right. That's right. Now, now, I had been just thinking about this, trying to figure out like what. What can I say to the people to make them understand that this book is the blueprint for white supremacy? It upholds it all the way. And I mean, like it, 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 it embeds it embeds it inside of all of our minds indirectly. It insinuates it, and we don't even see it. Now, something made me think about Dr. Francis uh, Wilkes Crescent in her book. She was speaking about um, the, the um, white genetic survival and um, how we got the potential to um, genetically annihilate them, that the whole Bible is their way to fight against their genetic annihilation because they're already teaching, well, they, they, they indirectly telling us who the black people is in the Bible. And they even describing it by speaking about a, a, a popular myth. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. It's like it, 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 it's, it's already trying to teach their women don't mess with them. Don't don't touch the courtesy of Cain of Canaan. You know what I mean? To to protect their survival on this land. Right. You know what I mean? The All right, brother, I got another call. Student, Thank man. you, brother. Got right. another call. Peace out. Peace. Call from Cain Kush. Peace and black power to my brother King Kush in the building. What up, King? <clears throat> Peace, peace, family. What up with you, man? I'm good, brother. What's happening? Good, good. Peace to the platform. Peace to everybody in chat, chat room. Hey, man, I'm so sick and tired of they keep talking about this New Testament. The New Testament is way worse than the Old Testament. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Because it, it states that this, this is what cracks the New Testament here, is that the resurrection of Jesus, why is it in the Bible is three different accounts on how he resurrected from the dead? And Matthew is saying something different. Mark is saying something different. And Luke is saying three di- totally different accounts. Matthew said that Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Tomb was open. The angel was sitting on top right. of it. I'm familiar Luke, with that. Luke said, Luke said it was Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and two men in white was outside of it. And Lucas says that when Mary Magdalene went in the tomb, there's a white man inside sitting down. Now, I'm familiar with all of that. So you are right. All contradictions. All contradictions. That's, I mean, that's the biggest contradiction of the New Testament. So how can you even follow right. it once you first crack the New Testament open? Yep. I agree. You know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 it's like when, when they... They trying to scare, discredit the New Testament is because the New Testament contradicts everything. <laughs> right. Starting, That's right. Starting, starting from, you know, ask a Hebrew who is the alphabet of being Syrah. He's the one who they get the first.
first niggas, Adam first wife. They had to throw him out, but they still had the honor that he taught this. He wrote niggas in there. That's why it says that on the in Genesis first chapter twenty six says that you know God made man and woman on the sixth day, and then it said on seventh day God rested, and then it said that Adam went to sleep. And then God went in the womb of Adam. Now, let me ask you a question, my brother, King Cuss. Mm-hmm. When God created Adam, was there already people on the earth that you know of what the Bible is telling us? Yes, there was. But no, no, listen to, what, listen, to the, listen to the question. When Adam created, when he said, let us create man in our image, was there ever men on the earth before God said that? And if so... Where they was at? Show me in the scripture. No, there was not. There Thank was you. Not. That's what I'm. That's what I asked you. That's why I said, listen because to the question. How can there be anyone? How can there be anyone created when this God counting his days down? From one, Thank two, you. Three, four, two, all the Thank time. you, brother. He didn't mention See, nobody. He didn't mention nobody. Oh man, nobody. that's why that shit is so easy. That's why this shit is so easy to pick apart. But these dumb niggas talking about, well, what about the land of naught? Nigga, does it say he created the land of naught in his creation story? In the book of Genesis, when it talks about it in the book of Genesis, day one, two, three, four, five. And on the seventh day, God what? Rested. God was relaxed. And then Adam went to sleep. And he went in there. But he just said that he made man and woman on the street. That's right. After the seventh day. Right. What what day is that? That's the eighth or ninth day. Come on, brother. Come on. The Genesis is contradicted. It's gone. Erase it. So this is what I'm trying to tell you, that these niggas add to what they want to say. Even though it's saying it in the scriptures, they don't want nobody to believe what they read. Don't believe them. Don't believe your eyes, nigga. Just believe what we're telling you. Because in the land of Nod, there's people already there. Well, nigga, all you're telling me is that there's a contradiction there now. Simple. Well, why, why God didn't talk about Niles in the first seven days? Thank you. There you go, brother. That's the point that I'm getting to, man. And then that's my question is this. If God say on the 31st, from, from the 26th all the way down to the 31st first, in the first chapter of Genesis, he said that he saw that he made man and woman, trees to eat and seeds, and all of this. Was the right. And guess what? Oh, guess what? But check it out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Your question is what? The, my question is, when God rested on the seventh, and then the second chapter says that Adam went to sleep. So if God made man and woman on the sixth day, then what day did he make Eve? Okay. Okay. But check this out. When God said he... he he put Adam into a deep sleep, took out his rib, held him back up, and brought the woman to Adam. And what did Adam do? Adam said, what? I'm going to call your name Womb Man because you came from the bone of man. So he called the woman. And, and, and what? She was also the first woman on the first, what? Being on the planet. All the humans came from her. It's telling you that. So... I don't give a damn about the land of Nod. See, when people saying that God God kicked out kicked Adam out of the garden, when did God kick him out of the garden? See what I'm saying? Here's you. This where you think at. How old was he? He didn't kick him out the first day that he made him, because remember he was 125 years old when his son came on the planet, Seth. He was 125 years when Seth came. So how old right. was Adam when he got kicked out of the garden? Nigga, that's a hundred goddamn years uh, later. Oh, It's already, pe- oh, of course, there's people man. here now. <laughs> mm. Y'all niggas, these did niggas is crazy. Huh? Did he get that back in? At what age? I don't know. But don't know. that's what explains that on how, how... It's just a contradiction on the beginning. That's all it shows, brother. That's all it shows. Once you once you bump that motherfucker beginning, uh, how can you go anywhere else? The first page of the book, the first verse, the first chapter is debunked. Soon when you open and read the first verse, it's debunked. And what it say? God made what? The heaven and the earth, right? 
What is Adam? Right. How we know that? How we know that? Yep. Because the Ecclesiastic says what? No man knows the beginning of the end. So how we know this whole book? So how we know anything? Check this out, and I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Genesis 3.20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Living. Grand opening. Grand closing. Grand opening. Period. Grand closing, brother. Simple, man. There you go. Simple shit. And if you you, show me. Thank you, my brother. Peace. (laughs) And if y'all want to show me other things on the land or not, I don't give a damn. I know it says um, Canaan went down to the land of Nod. He already knew his wife. I know all of that. So it still don't say the land of Nod was here before he created. Because when God created man, Adam and Eve, there was nobody here yet, fool. Show me that it was people here before God created Adam and Eve. Show it to me. I'll wait. Show it to me in the scripture, nigga. I'll wait. Show it to me. Just like this nigga said, right? Where it go? Where it go? Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. <laughs> I'll show you. The Bible had never told you that Adam and Eve, those two entities, were the first people on the earth, dumbass. And look at it. He said, like, like conviction. Like, he know he got it. The Bible had never told you that Adam and Eve... Those two entities were the first people on the earth, dumbass. The Bible had never told you that Adam and Eve, those two entities were the first people on the earth, dumbass. The Bible had never told you that Adam and Eve, those two entities were the first people on the earth, dumbass. Yes, it do, dummy. You just going past the scripture. Look at right here in Genesis 3.20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve. Because she was the mother of all living, asshole. Grand opening, grand closing. Now, I don't give a damn about the land of Nod. I'm going by what I see with the receipts that I can prove. Yeah, we know Cain went down to the land of Nod, but how old was that then? Was it 75 years later? Was it 100 years later? Check. That's what they missing. But I'm going to help them. Let, let's go even further. I went over it already. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. He's talking about creating Adam. Were they the where where was the land of Nod at, stupid? Where was the land of Nod at? Because there's no human on the earth, right? So damn stupid. All they gotta do is go to the goddamn book of Genesis and you'll see it. There's no human on the earth yet. Because God is creating everything else. The animals, the fish, the water, the sun, the earth, shaping the mold and everything. Huh? There's no Nod yet. Damn, y'all niggas are so fucking stupid. Bring forth your scripture and prove me wrong. Don't give me your interpretation without scripture. If you can't show it to me in scripture, shut your ass up because it's called makeup. Come on, man. Call in before I close this out, man. Before I close this out, y'all. I'm going to bring you in for DG tomorrow, man. Call in. Let's get it. Y'all done? If y'all done, I can move on, man. I close out. These niggas ain't ready for me, man. Because I'm just here to bring the truth. This is what we gonna do. Speak the truth, speak the truth. People need to understand this. Straight shot, no, I can't miss. Are you just talking? Never, I do this here often. One of the biggest mistakes you ever can make is disrespecting the greatness. You may have never heard this before. One more for the playlist, tell them what to do. This is what we gonna do. Speak the truth, speak the truth. People need to understand this. Straight shot, no, I can't miss. Are you just talking? Never, I do this here often. One of the biggest mistakes you ever can make is disrespecting the greatness. You may have never heard this before. One more for the playlist, tell them what to do. Thanks. Kudos for-